Hello and welcome to Color Multimedia Enterprises. My name is Luke, also known as Tianery, and in this particular video tutorial, what I'm going to show you is being able to draw graphics onto the screen and move those graphics around in OpenFL and Hakes. I do apologize for the delay between this video and the next one, the previous one even, and hopefully I'll get back on track on giving you some more OpenFL tutorials and being able to develop RPG video games or any game for that matter. So thank you for staying tuned and I will see you in a moment. Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial on OpenFL. In this tutorial we are going to, as I mentioned in the introduction video, produce some graphics onto the screen. We're just going to do something simple such as creating a white box and being able to move that white box across the screen. So. I did originally have a video on YouTube, but unfortunately the audio quality was so low that I decided to recreate the video. So I pretty much know what I'm doing, so this is not going in blind, unfortunately, but I suppose in a way that's a good thing. So what I'm currently doing is creating a few variables that will define our rectangle so bear with me so each of these variables pretty much do what you expect we've got an x and y location for our rectangle and a width and height i'm going to set those so i'm going to say rect x is 30 rect y is 30 and i think they will also be 30 by 30 as well And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take control of the graphics class and in, in here what I'm going to do is begin fill which will allow us to set a color so I'm going to give it an hex a hexadecimal value of FFFFFF which is basically the equivalent to white. Um, so e every two digits or letters is corresponds to a red, green or blue value. So the first two are red values, next two are green, next two are blue. You can also put in alpha values as well, but this method in particular does not support that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rect onto the screen. So I'm going to say rect x there rect y, rect width, and rect height, like that. So let's test this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to command prompt, and in here I'm going to type hxlib, run openfl test, and that I have to then say project.xml, which is this file here. So I'm telling OpenFL to test this particular project. And then I'm going to choose a target. In this case, I'm going to choose Nico. And I am then going to just press Enter. So wait for it to build. And then it will show up. And here we go. Now we can't actually move that thing around, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add that functionality. So I'm going to add a few more variables at the top here. And I'm going to say up, so that we can move up. I'm also going to say move left. When I can finally type down and you guessed it, it's going to be right again when I can actually finally type. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to add an event to the stage. And the reason it's going to be to the stage is because we want the entire stage to be able to listen in on the key up and key down event. So we're going to get a keyboard event, we're going to say key down and I and that's going to take a function which is keyboard event and in here 
I'm going to say if e dot keycode is equal to let's say a so I'm going to say keyboard dot a and I'm going to say up is equal to true okay if e dot keycode is equal to keyboard dot a no that's supposed to be w if this is a then we're going to say left is equal to true now the reason I'm doing if instead of else if is because we are basically going to when we do that we're basically saying okay we are we can do WASD all at once if we wanted to we can move diagonally if we wanted to if we wanted to restrict the player to only move only up down left or right exclusively then what we would do is add an else in front of it so that you can only move in one direction at any given time but I'm not going to do that for the time being so if it's s then we want down is equal to true and I'm going to say e dot keycode is equal to keyboard not d and then right is equal to true okay now what I'm going to do is when we release the key then we are going to set them to false as you could probably imagine so keyboard event now I'll explain what's gonna happen in a moment so what I'm just gonna do is just copy and paste this code into here and I'm going to make these false okay so what's going on what is going on so by adding an event listener what I'm doing is I'm saying I want to listen on an event which is key up so every time we release a key on the keyboard that event has been dispatched to the stage object because that's the object that we're adding the event to this function is going to then be executed whatever was dispatched inside the event is going to be passed in as a parameter here so if we were to release our d key it's going to take it's going to dispatch the event and it's going to put the d key key code value into that key code variable there that's why when we say if e dot key code is d then it's going to say right is equal to false that's what it's going to execute okay does that make sense I hope so because I can't hear you <laughs> so how to then how do we then execute it so that we can now actually move the object so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another event listener and I'm going to do enter frame again I'll explain that in a moment so this is going to be passed in as just a simple event then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say var delta time is equal to now there's going to now we're going to actually measure the distance that our object is going to move based on that delta time so in what I'm going to do is lib.getTimer so we're going to get the time from since the application was launched and we're going to use that to determine how much time was passed between the last frame and the current frame okay so we're going to take that elapsed variable and we're going to say and I need another variable in order to do this so what I'm going to do is private var time started and that's going to be an int time started I'm going to say is going to be zero when we start the application because naturally when you start the application the time is going to start at zero so when we go through the enter frame 
what I'm going to do is elapsed minus time started. Then I'm going to say time started is equal to elapsed, right? So every time we're going to go into the next frame, we're going to get the timer. We're going to then minus that by time started and then time started is going to become our current time that has elapsed, if that makes sense. And obviously that will change depending on how many how much time has been spent between each frame and at least now what we can do is move the sprite in a certain way let's say so let me just demonstrate for you what I mean by that so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create another internal variable here and I'm gonna call it speed and this is going to be 0 0.1 let's say so if up so basically when we have our W key up pressed even then up is going to equal to true so if it is true then we want to move this rectangle up so what I'm going to do is rect x no rect y even I'm going to minus that by speed multiplied by delta time okay so what this is basically doing is it's saying okay from between the last frame and the current frame we want to get how much time that was spent to do so. We want to multiply that time that was spent by the speed that we want this rectangle to go. That means that regardless of what machine is being used, whether I'm running at 40 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second, it doesn't matter. It will always be the same speed between each of those computers okay if that makes sense okay so if left then we want to say rect x minus equals speed times delta time I'm just going to copy and paste this because it just makes life a bit e easier if down then we want to say rect y plus equals speed times delta time and if right rect x plus equals speed times delta time okay so now what we want to do is clear the graphics because if we didn't then it would repeat the same image over and over again and that's not we that's not what we want so instead what we're going to do is we're now going to begin fill because when we clear the device it's going to reset everything all of the colors everything the default as you can see is zero which means when we clear it the any styling that we've done previously will be cleared and reset to be black which is not what we want so we need to set that again and then we're going to draw the rectangle again. And I might as well just copy this. <clears throat> okay, so let's check this and see what happens. So let's rebuild it. As you can see, I just pressed up on the keyboard to go back up to the commands to build it. Just makes life a bit easier. So now when I move it, up down left and right we can now move it and you can also see that I can move it diagonally and stuff like that so that was pretty quick tutorial honestly so that is basically how you can move things about on the screen we've gotten into how to tie that in with the frame rate which is very important by the way if you have people with different systems you don't really want to be moving things about on the screen at different speeds depending on what frame rate you're using if for example I'm using 
30 frames per second and someone else is using 60 frames per second and we're not doing it this way then the person with 60 frames per second is going to have everything running at twice the speed which is not what we want so as you can see it pretty much works the way that we wanted to and you probably saw that the white rectangle was a bit jerky that's probably because I'm recording and also as far as I'm concerned when you actually open the RPG tutorial.exe it doesn't actually open onto your graphics device by default I believe it checks to see what your default graphics device is which in this case for me it's actually Intel HD graphics which is obviously not so great so if you have that problem then what we can do is if we go to our folder wherever I put it <laughs> it should be in documents so if I go down to do, 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 games RPG tutorial if I go into the bin Nico obviously that's our recent one so if I right click I go to run with graphics processor high, vi high performance so that still actually looks rather jerky I'm not 100% sure why that is it might just be because I'm recording and I'm just being stupid but yes I'm not 100% sure what's going on there it, does look a bit jerky as you can see it maybe that's just me I'm not 100% sure not sure if you can see it on YouTube but yeah not 100% sure what's going on there but anyway thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial on how to draw things onto the screen and use key up and key down events and I will see you next time